Hi, welcome to episode 20 of Talk About the Passion. 20 episodes already. That really flew by. And uh, I'm certainly looking forward to many more as long as uh, people want to have a conversation. I'll keep recording them. Uh, nor rain, snow, act of God. Uh, but uh, before I start this one, I want to thank my friend Amanda, who uh, I imagine will never even hear this, uh, but uh, for loaning me a spot at her place of work in Salem to uh, record this episode. So thanks, Amanda. Um, so episode 20 is with uh, my friend Nate Newton. If you uh, follow this podcast or simply look at the names of the episodes, you'll, you'll notice they're all named after songs. Uh, the vast majority of them are, are related to the episode. The person might have uh, mentioned the particular artist or, or that record that, that the song came from, or I just thought it fit the episode for whatever reason. Uh, this particular episode today is uh, named after a lungfish song. Uh, we don't talk about lungfish in this episode, uh, but I, I know Nate's a fan, and uh, the lyrics don't really have anything to do with the episode. I just thought it worked well for a title so uh okay so we're all happy here with that uh i was glad to have uh have nate record an episode his band converge are one of my favorite bands uh from the hardcore scene although at this point and at no point really do converge uh sound like a typical hardcore band um you know they've stood in their own spot and managed to at least in my opinion get better with age all of their uh, records are like a step forward from the previous one, and, and the chemistry they have at this point is, is pretty amazing. And, you know, for a band who have a record that uh, Rolling Stone put in their top 100 uh, greatest metal albums of all time, uh, Jane Doe, you know, they're just a humble group of hardcore kids at the end of the day uh, making music they want to make. And, uh, you know, that's the essence of punk rock or hardcore, whatever, whatever you want to call it. So uh, we we talk a bit about that record, of course, and uh, and then some of his other uh, musical projects. Uh, you might know, like uh, the Doom Riders and uh, Old Man Gloom, and uh, he he tells a great story about how he got to work with uh, the Cavalier Conspiracy. So and uh, we even get into some skateboarding, which uh, kind of ties the whole episode together, as you'll see. So. Uh, a couple more things. Uh, I'm on social media, so uh, if you search for Talk About the Passion podcast, I should be able to find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, same goes for wherever you like to listen to your podcasts, uh, iTunes, uh, Google Play, whatever. I'm actually on uh, Spotify now as well, so if that's your... Uh, if you use Spotify for podcasting uh, and search for Talk About the Passion podcast, you'll find me on there. Uh, and also, uh, if you like what you hear, you can give me a review on iTunes. Uh, you don't have to write anything, but hey, if you like it, uh, give it a grade and uh, you know subscribe, and you won't you f if, and you won't miss any new episodes. And uh, one last thing, if you or someone you know uh, would like to be on this podcast. Uh, you know, definitely send me a message on Facebook or Twitter and uh, we can set something up. Anyway, thanks for listening. Uh, episode 20. Uh, here we go with uh, Nate Newton. So I'm here with my friend Nate Newton. How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you, man? Good. Good. Very good. Uh, thanks for doing this for me. And, thanks for uh, having me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're here in Salem, Mass., where where you lived for a little while. Yeah. Uh, but you you weren't born here. Where, where did you grow up? I grew up in Virginia. Yeah. Uh, Virginia Beach. Yeah. Um, I moved to Massachusetts in '99. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And. Uh, when you were growing up there, how how did you get into music and, and that kind of stuff? Um, I mean, just music in general. Yeah, yeah. Did you have like a person in your family or? Uh, or anything? I mean, there was always music. Yeah. In in the house, you know, my parents had a pretty pretty decent record collection. Um, my grandfather was a country western musician. He passed away when I was, you know, like not even a year old, mm -hmm. but. Uh, I think that he cast a pretty big shadow mm -hmm. 
yeah, um, on the rest of the family. So, it, it, you know, there was always like a value put on music yeah, yeah. In, in my family. Yeah. So th- it was always encouraged. Mm-hmm. My, my parents were cool. They'd let me go through their records even when, you know, I was probably ruining them. <laughs> I was definitely ruining them. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Do you, do you remember any specific ones that hit you that, that kind of... Yeah, well, the very first record that I ever owned belonged to my dad when he was a kid. He gave it to me. It was Marty Robbins' uh, Gunfighter Ballads. Yeah, yeah. And then um, just stuff that sticks out, kind of digging through my parents' collection when I was a kid. Diamond Dogs. Mm-hmm. You know, like you would look at the covers of records. Yeah, and be like, yeah. I want to know what that's about. Right, so right. Like, it was like yeah. Diamond Dogs, um, uh, Lou Reed, um, Rock and Roll Animal. Yeah. Oh. Um, Bob Marley, Exodus. I remember. Hmm. Like they had a good record yeah, collection. Was, you know, it was pretty broad too. That's yeah, cool. they they had all kinds of stuff. You know, it was it was, it was pretty cool. Yeah. So. And uh, do you remember your first, the first concert you went to? Oh, uh, <laughs> I mean, like very first concert? Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no I mean, it was you know, it was like stupid right. shit that like a town puts on. And yeah. Like, oh, it's a free concert. Right. Let's go. Like yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. Right. You right. know. Um, it was like probably like. Kenny Loggins or right, something right. like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. But uh, um, yeah, I I don't remember. I remember the first like show that I went to. Yeah, like, yeah. shows and concerts. Yeah, and yeah, different yeah, was, things. Uh, so what was that? Very first punk show I I went to was Agnostic Front and the Vandals. Yeah. Um, and I didn't know who either band was. Yeah. Uh. And I got scared and I left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like 12, I think. Or, yeah. Um, 13. I uh, was, I've told this story like a million times, but yeah, yeah. I was, I was down at the oceanfront in Virginia beach mm-hmm. skating around, um, went to a surf shop to buy some stickers. Yeah. And cause my, my mom's friend lived up the street from there and mm-hmm. she, you know, we were pretty free range. Yeah. Um, and I ran into some older skaters from my neighborhood mm-hmm. and they were like, what are you doing? Come with us. Yeah. We're going to this show. And I was like, yeah, punk show. <laughs> and, um, yeah. So I went and I, I don't know how I even got in cause I didn't have money. Right. Right. Like, I guess someone just figured I was somebody's little brother and they just, I just walked in. Yeah. Um, and it was the scariest <laughs> group of human beings I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. I, I, I stayed for like 45 minutes. Yeah. I saw someone get beat up. Yeah. And then I left. And the person who got beat up, I found out decades later. Yeah. From him. Yeah. Uh, was Randy Blythe. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, wow. That's interesting. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, yeah, Agnostic Front. When I, I remember when I first heard them and saw that first record, I was kind of scared of them because it's yeah new york hardcore at least with with me when i was like 13 or 14 yeah it was like the boston stuff and suicidal tendencies black flag but then that af record came out and the pictures of them i was like these guys are these scary. dudes will, <laughs> yeah. these dudes will stab you yeah you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, like definitely. they're they're living on a whole other plane of existence <laughs> that i can't understand right right um yeah I'm still scared of them. Yeah, yeah, dudes. yeah, yeah. You know, and and they're fucking sweetheart guys, sweethearts, yeah. the nicest dudes ever. But yeah. I, like Roger, especially, yeah, like yeah. he's awesome. Yeah. Every time I've ever talked to him, he's been nothing but nice to me. But I'm yeah, still yeah. just like, <gasps> <laughs> and I think it all goes back to that first time I saw him. Yeah, yeah. You know. So so after that, did you kind of get the bug to want to go to more shows, even though you were scared? Um, no, it was it was probably. a couple of years yeah not not many like right, right. one one or two years yeah um i saw like agent orange and some more i guess kind of some some bigger shows like the ramones yeah um and then yeah i just started going to hardcore shows yeah it just i mean i guess it's a similar story for yeah. most people our age you just right, kind right. of ease your way into yeah, it yeah. and then 
socially you kind of find your way in because right. other people are like oh come hang out with us right, right. you know yeah, yeah. i want to be with the cool kids yeah yeah and uh so you started playing music eventually yeah i there i start well my family moved to atlanta okay. for for a year mm-hmm. when i was like 13 to 14 and i met some other kids down there like skaters and stuff yeah. and one of them played guitar mm-hmm. and so he had a mini ramp in his backyard so i was like at yeah. his house all the time right. and uh you know he kind of showed me some stuff on guitar and that was when i was like all right yeah i want to do this yeah. you know i'm gonna learn how to i'm gonna learn how to play guitar right and uh actually really genuinely trying to play music that didn't really happen until i mean I got a guitar <laughs> thinking I want to be in a band. Yeah, yeah. Didn't give two shits about learning how to play it. Right, right. Um, but actually making that, like trying to make that a reality probably when I was about 15. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, 14, 15, something like that. Okay. And uh, Jesuit, uh, that was, when, when did you start that? That was, Jesuit was 90... Five, yeah, I think. So I was twenty, yeah, when that band started. Okay, Um, my first band was god awful. Yeah, we were called Lift. Okay, and um, yeah, it was just. I mean, it's like any other any other band in high school. Like, oh, you have you have drums, right? Right. You know, you have a bass. Cool. We're in a band. Right. Right. And luckily, you know, they all kind of we all sort of had similar tastes yeah. you know and so we kind of were a i don't know what we were yeah what what kind of stuff were you guys digging yeah i mean we were in virginia so yeah. like everybody the dc cast a pretty heavy shadow yeah. on us so we yeah. had all loved like discord stuff and yeah. then like one of the guys in the band was like a smith's morrissey super fan mm-hmm. you know i was probably the I was the dude that was like way, way into hardcore, yeah, yeah. but we all kind of like uh, agreed on Fugazi. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So, yeah, that's sort of like a common ground. For yeah, so that was sort of where we all met. Nice. Um, we didn't sound like that. No. <laughs> we were fucking terrible. Yeah. Like, I found a demo tape not that long ago and, and uh, put it on and listened to it, and I was like, did were we rapping what the hell oh, what, what is this yeah. like I, I it wasn't what i remembered it being yeah. but it yeah it's bad it's have people bad. seen is is that out and something people could find if they god i hope not because yeah. <laughs> it's embarrassing yeah, yeah um yeah yeah but then like pretty much right as i graduated from high school um i was like i want to play the heavy shit yeah yeah you know because i had, i was always into like the aggressive right stu- like hardcore and stuff and like metal and everything but yeah. couldn't find people that were coming from the same place yeah, yeah. and so uh yeah right around when i graduated from high school i started a band called channel okay with uh with some friends and that was the first time that i was like okay this is a real band yeah we're like all on the same page right let's do this you know and then that's when all the bullshit started yeah <laughs> just ha- having to work with other people and no i mean no it was rad I'm, yeah, yeah. I, like i mean the bullshit in general is the the, the long road that brought oh, me right, to right. sitting here in this yeah, chair yeah, yeah. with you yeah yeah, yeah you know yeah, yeah. that's cool but, so then uh, jesuit happened after that yeah jesuit was it, channel broke up channel did like a couple of tours mm-hmm. our first tour was with converge oh wow. um I th- which I believe was Converge's first tour as well. Nice. Um, so, like, we, you know, we were tight with, I've, I've been tight with those guys since 1993, 94, yeah. okay. something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, you know, as anyone in a in a band will tell you, most people aren't cut out for being in a touring band. Right, right. And, you know, so it fell apart. Yeah. Also, I was crazy that's a that's a big part of it (laughs) yeah Um, yeah. and so that band broke up and by that point i had like discovered i'd gotten like into you know like the am rep touch and go stuff and was just like i want to be i want to 
want to be crazy <laughs> crazy and hardcore because right, i right. love infest <laughs> and i and i love jesus lizard right right you know and like dead guy and today is the day and all that stuff was yeah, happening yeah. and i was you know i loved rorschach yeah um so i was like all right let's start it i'm gonna start my crazy heavy right band now. <laughs> that was my heavy band right, this right. is my crazy heavy band <laughs> yeah yeah and um so found some like-minded individuals yeah and uh we started fucking making noise yeah. you know like uh brett who played bass in the band mm -hmm. he was like one of the only people i knew in the area that like you know he's the guy who turned me on to sleep in oh, you know okay. in 1993 or whatever yeah, yeah. like or 94 i don't know something like that right um like and we all love neurosis and right. all that stuff and yeah. like so we're like let's do that yeah or well not that right or, right yeah, you yeah. know what i mean yeah um so yeah we started that band and uh same story not everybody's cut out for being in a touring band and i'm yeah. crazy yeah and yeah I was exceptionally crazy then yeah. and like exceptionally difficult to deal with. Yeah. And so I drove that band right into the ground. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then uh, right about the time when that was happening, uh, Converge needed a bass player. Yeah. And so they were like, hey, we're going on this tour. Yeah. You want to fill in on bass? And I was like, yeah, sure. Yeah. It's got four strings. Yeah, yeah. I could do that. Right never really played bass before right didn't own a bass yeah didn't learn the songs until three <laughs> days before the t I, sh I showed up and i sat in kurt's bedroom with him in alston yeah and he showed me the songs and i did not know them <laughs> and we left on tour and i could tell he was so bummed right <laughs> but uh yeah i just strummed my bass and jumped around right and acted crazy and uh you kind of do that now. That's I mean, kind of what I do now. I but it works sort out. of know the yeah, songs right. <laughs> now. Um, and that's, uh, and now that here was, we are. Yeah, yeah. And that was, was that like 99 or 2000? Uh, 98. 98, okay. 98, I, yeah. I joined the band. Yeah. And uh, so that was sort of right before Jane Doe happened. Yeah. I joined right when uh, when Forever Comes Crashing. Okay, oh, okay. Out. Like right. St Steve had recorded with them. Yep. And then Cave In was, you know, that's like when uh, Beyond Hypothermia came mm -hmm. out, I believe. Yeah. And so they were like, you know, Cave In Full was on. like, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. And, I'm, you know, I'm glad they did. Yeah, yeah, of Fucking course. incredible. Oh, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that record came out and they were like, well, we need somebody to play bass. Yeah. And I was like, fuck it, I'll do it. I yeah. have nothing going on in my life at all. Right. Might as well play your songs. Yeah. So... And what was that? Was that like the... Because they were already pretty established at that point. And yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. it For me, it was really amazing because, like, I was used to going on tour for... Again, going back to me being crazy. Right. Like, yeah, let's go on tour for two months. Who gives a shit if we have guarantees? Like, right, right. you know, literally paying playing for, like, 20 bucks a night. Right. You know, like, not breaking even i mean right. that's what killed that band yeah yeah but um yeah so like i came back from the converge tour and i had like three hundred dollars and i yeah. was like this is fucking amazing <laughs> <laughs> yeah i made money yeah you know yeah and uh so then when jane doe happened did you, did you have uh so you were obviously a full-time member were you part of like writing when you guys yeah put it together? Did you guys all? Yeah, the the first thing that I had any part of was the uh, the split with agoraphobic nosebleed, mm -hmm. um, and I've got like some riffs here and there, and then the that uh, what's this song called? The one with the Ric Flair sample, <laughs> Minnesota. Yeah, that I wrote that one. Oh, all right, and then. Um, Thaw is that on that? Thaw is on the Hell Child split. Okay, that's that right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So like the, those that and the Hell Child split were the first two things that I was a part of. Yeah. And then um, Jane was like the first L full LP. Yeah. Which actually was the first full LP I had ever played on. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so that um, I guess. Um, 
my role in all that was just I, I was bringing riffs to the table and stuff but um i think up until that point the band had operated very differently yeah and um like you know kurt was the the main writer right not necessarily because he was like you know i'm in charge we do things my way but like he was the guy with the guitar and right he, you know he, he wrote riffs and yeah, so yeah. like i started bringing riffs to the table uh aaron, aaron wrote some stuff too um like you know aaron was writing stuff with kurt as yeah. well in the yeah. past and then um i started bringing stuff to the table but i think before i joined the band you know maybe the other guys will say differently i i think they would probably agree with me mm -hmm. um before i joined the band i don't think there was anybody really saying hey don't do that right like right. you don't need to put all of those riffs in one song right, or right. like that riff's kind of weak dude you don't need to put that in there right. or like what i i think there was nobody ever just going why why right why right. is that there yeah. i don't get it you know um and so I, I think probably my biggest contribution at least at that time was editing yeah that's you cool. know yeah i mean i i have i have a few songs on jane doe and like some riffs here and there and stuff but right. that, i think that's probably the biggest contribution that that was i think the first time that collectively the band was like oh yeah we should self-edit right <laughs> we don't need to cram 15 songs into one song you yeah know? The, the focus on that record you can you can kind of see that when you when you listen to that record oh it's yeah definitely, definitely. Like it's, it's very uh yeah i, I think I, I think that's definitely one of the reasons the other reason is ben joined the band yeah, yeah. and like that was the first time that we had someone able to physically do what we were all visualizing right right you know yeah he's like a crazy you know, <laughs> drum robot that's yeah, just yeah. like yeah do this like but right. ding, ding ding you know and, yeah, yeah. and he does it and then, and then you're like yeah like that but your left hand should hit this and your right hand should hit this so that it sounds so it throws the beat this way right oh like this yeah like, how did you just do that like <laughs> I, I can't okay yeah but yeah that's that's been yeah and that record did that was that any sort of like controversy with that with like hardcore people thinking it was you know you're this isn't pure hardcore at this point or uh, that kind of did you guys hear I, I don't really I, I think that that sort of a um, reaction Converge had already been yeah. like fuck you with yeah yeah well not only that but like people had been giving them that reaction for you know 10 years at that point almost. right right um, yeah. Uh, what what I do remember reaction wise is it was a very slow burn yeah. as far as like you know people coming around to it especially like people who had been fans of the band for a long yeah, time yeah. like I, I think generally speaking I don't know maybe not now it's it's right. been a long time since yeah, then yeah. but like you have people who like converge pre jane doe and right. people who like converge post jane doe yeah, and yeah. like you know it was it drew a line in the sand for yeah. sure like there were people that were just like what the fuck is this <laughs> you know yeah yeah and then, and then there were other people that were like what the fuck is this yeah, yeah. yeah. you know yeah, yeah. so i don't know it, it's funny jake like that was the first time that uh a label had a, a publicist for us yeah and like jake has like this fucking notebook full of like all the press yeah and it's like mostly bad reviews really like people didn't like it huh. or, or didn't get it yeah, i don't yeah. know it took a little while for right. it to to kind of sink in yeah and you know but we we felt good about it yeah so yeah who yeah, cares? I think, uh, yeah you know yeah I feel, I feel like after that you guys i mean i felt like it was always going to be a different record each time and that was why i got into the band anyway, oh, personally thanks, like man. Because, you know, it's Motorhead and the Ramones and those bands that kind of do the same thing. That's awesome because they do it well. Yeah. But I, I usually generally like bands that kind of switch it up. and Yeah, uh, I'm the same way. Stay, you know, if I hear like a song like Cruel Bloom and 
Tongue Jehovah. Mm-hmm. It's, to me, they're both hardcore songs. Yeah. But it's just yeah, they're it's a totally, different vibe. Yeah, it's just, totally and, different. And yeah, it, it's funny. Like, um, I, I personally like whenever we're writing a record. I never. I don't think any of us ever really go into it with a theme in mind. Like, right. You know, all right, this one's going to be a, like a super metal record. Right, or right. Like, you know, this one's going to be the punk record. Right, like, right. I think we all are just like, I just want to make a record I want to listen to right now, mm-hmm. you know? So that's kind of, and and that can, that can be super fickle and like, that's wholly dependent on just other shit we're listening to yeah, at the yeah. time. So yeah. yeah, it's just sort of what, what happens, happens when we're in a room together, I yeah. guess. Yeah. And you guys sort of at this point through three you have children and all of us do all do, oh ben. yeah okay yeah um, we went from uh no kids to uh <laughs> wait how many two four it, zero kids is six kids yeah yeah and um the last record all we Le- all we love what's what's it called all oh, we love oh, we leave love behind be. <laughs> <laughs> that record's older than all of our kids that's funny yeah so zero to dad rock and yeah yeah you know <laughs> in one year or whatever so with that and and uh some of your other projects which we can talk about uh what's the process the songwriting process and with converge at this point mostly arguing yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. i don't like that i don't like it either right well, what the fuck do you want to do then <laughs> i don't know write something better yeah yeah that kind of shit yeah no i mean like it's all pretty it's pretty organic we just get in the room like nobody really writes complete songs right we you know maybe we'll work on like some basic skeletons Mm -hmm. and just bring it to the table and like if if you if you're bringing an idea to the table you bring it in under the the premise that there's a very good chance it's going to get chopped up and torn apart, completely reworked, and be something completely different than what you went in with. Right, right. And um, you know, and that's that can sometimes be frustrating, but it's also really fun. Yeah, yeah. And it's 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 really cool to just you know have an idea and put it out there, and in your mind, it's one thing, and then someone else interprets it completely differently, and then it becomes this completely other thing that neither of you had thought. Right, of. right. And yeah. so. Uh, that's basically yeah i don't know if i answered your question really uh yeah yeah no I, it's, it's it's just it's, the four of us literally in a room together like yeah yeah hey how about this riff right right yeah i can do that behind it right okay cool yeah. where do we go after that <laughs> and that like literally that's that's it yeah you know it's it, it's there's no secret it's pretty boring yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you uh and you guys have had a lot of guests. Ex- well, except that the last album is just you four. But yeah, uh, w- what was that like working with? Uh, it's got to be amazing to work with just these people that you're friends with that are also just yeah, it's, great it, artists and yeah, like Von Till and uh, Chelsea and Chelsea. Yeah, Chelsea hasn't actually been on a record yet, but doing the the, 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 the Blood Moon thing, thing was that was incredible. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to do more. Yeah, of that. yeah. Um, but I mean, in, in every case that we've worked with someone else, it's just, it came out of like a mutual respect and friendship mostly. And then just maybe a little bit of guidance, like yeah. here's what we're thinking. Right. And then go to town. Yeah. You know, the, the Genghis Tron guys really fucking went nuts with, with uh, wretched world. Yeah. And like, I love that song. Thanks it's, man. Yeah. It, it totally became something different you know a lot of the songs on that record what, which record is that is that no heroes a- uh, axe to fall, axe to fall. Yeah. <laughs> i literally don't even know what songs are on what records anyway yeah, I, yeah. half the time i don't even know the song titles <laughs> um axe to fall a lot of those collaborative songs came out of an idea that we had had years before to do this like collaborative kind of mega band with cave in oh okay and so we wrote a bunch of stuff and then it just nothing ever happened with uh. it and so uh yeah that that's why the guys from cave in all ended up playing on that record oh, okay. is because we were like well we've got all this stuff right right why don't we use it yeah and then you know they were all cool with it and then we were like well 
what do we do with it? Right. And so then we were we were literally like, well, I was thinking this song would be cool. I think Jake was like, this song would be cool with like, you know, Steve Von Till style vocals, right. you know. And we're like, well, why don't we just ask him to sing it? You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then that's how it all kind of like everything that happened. Like this song would be fucking sick with, right. You know, like an entombed fucking, right. gu- you know, guitar solo. We're right. like, well, let's get a foot to do it. Yeah, you yeah. know, and he and he did it. Like, that's awesome. So, nice. it's kind of we we've been really lucky with yeah. that stuff. Yeah. You know, no, it's good to we're, have. We're a really really lucky band. That's well, that's my I, opinion. I, I think the the hard work is is, is shows and it's, oh, it's thank you. In the, definitely, thank you. Yeah, the, the, I don't know, the hard work isn't really work it's right. just like oh, this is fun this is just what we, what we want to be yeah, doing yeah. Yeah. and like just the fact that we're able to keep doing all that i don't know i i feel like we're super lucky because there's a million hard working bands out there that yeah, yeah. don't really get their just due right and yeah yeah so i'm you know pretty thankful for that yeah no I, the guys are definitely humbled and oh, i well, think we're also amazing <laughs> but you know <laughs> although i remember a few years ago you would posted something on social media about someone that said must be nice oh god <laughs> <laughs> must be nice is the worst thing yeah yeah like you like you you know or sellouts or something and yeah like, well know, like, i don't even remember what the context of that yeah was. yeah i can't either i don't remember it but i just remember <laughs> thinking like yeah people just don't have uh i don't know yeah like I, i've had a few <clears throat> conversations with people in other bands where you know uh, like they're asking me advice or whatever and I'm like trying to be positive and like you know you just keep doing what you want to do you know keep like just stick with what you love like just do it because you love it and don't fucking worry about any other bullshit and like uh, people have literally said stuff to me like yeah that's really easy for you to say (laughs) I'm like I mean it's uh, yeah, it is easy for me to say because I have a mouth, but right. like, yeah, yeah. It, what what does that mean? Yeah, like, yeah, we just did what, what, like everything we've done was just because that's, that's what all did. we knew how to do. Right, right, you yeah. know, like I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Right. Yeah, people are gonna uh, people are gonna talk. But, that's uh, what they do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've seen comments on yeah, the internet about yeah, yeah. you know people talking yeah yeah i think <laughs> you and i have similar opinions on stuff with uh i know me on social media i like to stir trouble sometimes or i enjoy obnoxious. watching it, <laughs> it but, uh, you're good you're good at it <laughs> but at the end of the day you know the people that are like you know oh, this kid's got a misfit story he's probably never heard a song about it like that, that whole kind of attitude just so really dumb. bums me out like yeah it's silly it, people it's, were born at a certain time and this is what they get so yeah if some kid discovers the misfits because he bought the shirt in the mall like it's yeah whatever so what <laughs> you know what i have no qualms about saying i bought punk shirts just because i thought the artwork was yeah the artwork was cool right, without right. ever having heard the band yeah yeah you know and then i was like well i guess i better find out what these guys are about <laughs> yeah, yeah you know like whatever right it's just so dumb like bunch of old fuddy duddies yeah, getting yeah. angry about the kids yeah, like, yeah 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 it's kind of noxious. you know what asshole this shit doesn't belong to you it, yeah. it never belonged to you it never yeah. belonged to any of us yeah. it's 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 just music yeah. and like people can take it and interpret it however they fucking want yeah they you know millions of people getting in, get into it a million different ways yeah no one no one specific way is the right way like yeah. get over your fucking ego yeah let people enjoy music the way they want to enjoy yeah. it and if you don't like the way they're doing things or you don't like what they're doing it's got nothing to do with you yeah. fucking ignore it yeah it doesn't I matter that's you what know? i say with like with, when my adult friends talk about like justin bieber i'm like well you're 47 you're not really supposed to yeah like you, you know you could yeah what the fuck do you care yeah. about justin That's fucking <laughs> bieber you know what justin bieber can do a kick flip and you can't <laughs> go fuck yourself yeah, yeah. who cares <laughs> um, but anyway getting back to music so yes yeah, uh no 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 it's, i guess we are talking about music uh so you have a, another project which i really love is the the doom riders which is more of Thank like you. a straight up rock 
yeah it's kind of hard rock it's something band it's a it's a hard rocking band yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and how did how did that band come about um that was uh chris Papecki and i yeah i met chris when he was playing in cast iron hike yeah um mid 90s i yeah. guess early early to mid 90s something mm-hmm. like that and we you know we'd always we always had hit it off yeah um talked to, like every time i ran into him you know like if cast iron was coming through town or yeah. vice versa mm-hmm. like we would end up sitting and just talking about music yeah for you know hours yeah yeah and uh so it was always just this thing like all right dude we we gotta fucking play together yeah, someday yeah. and then when i moved to massachusetts he was like all right it's yeah. on let's do that and it took us like years to yeah. get it going yeah. but um and like he and i just jammed together you know randomly in in like you know his parents house or wherever right. for like a few years just yeah. the two of us trying to make it happen and that was that was actually when it dawned on me that i'm not a good guitar player <laughs> like playing with him i, I was like him, yeah, yeah. yeah i was like shit he's really good yeah yeah <laughs> he's like a he's a real guitar player he's a great guitar player i have a guitar <laughs> <laughs> um but uh yeah so we you know we, we kind of had this shared love of like the heavy rock and the stooges and like the same kind of metal yeah. you know and then like the the same sort of shared background in hardcore yeah um you know we were big into the whole like rock revival like scandinavian rock revival yeah, yeah. that was happening like helicopters oh, all yeah, the man's yeah. ruin stuff yeah you know so we were just like i want to start a fucking band that just rocks with guitar yeah. solos because at the time especially like it was the like the heavy music scene was kind of just overrun with these like overly sort of almost like i i sound like a dick but like almost fake intellectual heavy bands yeah, that were yeah. like we also listen to mogwa oh, right. you know <laughs> yeah, like, yeah yeah we don't Post, need yeah. to have the distortion on all the time. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll play these riffs that sound like Radiohead. Right, right. You know, and like a lot of those bands are fucking amazing and I right. love them, mm-hmm. but it just got so flooded with yeah, it yeah. that it was just like, oh my yeah. God, like this shit is boring. Yeah, yeah. You go to a show and it's like the, the band is up on the stage like with the, just this air about them like yeah. you need to be uh really focusing oh, on right. me i'm amazing and right. you need to uh acknowledge that right. how genius i am <laughs> well they're all facing the other way yeah and it's like just that. like fuck this is boring yeah, man yeah. what happened mm-hmm. to just having fucking fun yeah yeah and so that was it we were like let's just start a fucking shithead you know like <laughs> punk metal band yeah, yeah. you know and so that was yeah that's what we did yeah you know let's just write stupid songs right and, that that are badass yeah, and have yeah. fun you know yeah. like it's okay to like thin lizzy it's okay right. to fu- it's okay to like thin lizzy and fucking you know the first suicidal tendencies right. album yeah, at the yeah. same time yeah you course. know like yeah. let's do that yeah and so we did yeah and the, the, the last record, though, was a little more dark, I thought, the, the last one you did. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the, just like with any other band, like, I, I'm really bad at sticking to a formula. Yeah, yeah. And it's just kind of like, this is what I felt like doing. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, all, yeah. all of us, you yeah. know? And, like, I got a little better at guitar. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, there's only so many, like, cheesy rock riffs you can play over and over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yeah. And then I was in, you, you know, like lyrically, you'd go to dark places sometimes, yeah. and yeah. that's sort of where I was at. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And does that band still exist? Yeah, it's sort of on hiatus right now. Yeah. Um, mostly because of me. Yeah. Like, I think the, uh, the like, serious 
slap of reality that I got yeah. from fatherhood yeah, and yeah. trying to be like a full time working musician. Yeah. Definitely like made me have to reprioritize things yeah. and it you know it just slowed down yeah. being able to make you know, three bands work. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh yeah. That that being said, my plan is to spend this year working on a new Doom Riders yeah. album. So nice. Yeah. Let's hope that happens. Yeah. You guys have Converge is doing some more touring. Though, yeah, Converge is doing a lot. Because, yeah. I mean, you know, we don't tour like we used to when, right. when it, we'd be gone for months at a time yeah. since we've all got kids. Everything's yeah. broken into, mm -hmm. like, you know, little chunks. Yeah. But because of that, those chunks get spread out yeah. quite a bit more. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, it's all these bands, man. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. hard. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. hard when you're trying to, <laughs> like, teach a kid how to be a human being oh, right you right. know yeah uh and old man gloom is the other uh yeah old man gloom has always been th that's a really easy band to be yeah. a part of because yeah, yeah. it's it's sporadic yeah everything is based on just when people have some free time yeah and we don't really go into any writing or recording process with any expectations or really any material. Right. And we just kind of get in the room maybe a week before we're going to record and just whatever we come up with. Yeah, that's it. That's the record. Yeah. So hope you like it. Right. Um, but it's, it's a lot of fun because, I mean, Aaron is a creative genius. Right. And oh, yeah. I, it's really... It's, it's really neat to watch how he can visualize something yeah. that I can't yeah, yeah. you know and like he'll just be like this is the riff just play this yeah. do this and I'm like what is this this isn't even a song <laughs> right and then you know in his mind there's like 14 layers of right. other shit on top of it and yeah. it's an incredible song yeah, and yeah. I just couldn't hear it yeah. you know so it's uh, that's a super fun band yeah. to be a part of now having like these out, outside musical Ventures and you know, Jake and the, and the other members of Converge also have other things they do. Does that make being in Converge not more tolerable, but just make it bring other stuff in from those outside things? Yeah, yeah. very much. Like yeah. I, I've learned a lot from playing with with other people, you yeah. know, and it's, so has Jake. So all the guys have, yeah. you know. Um, it's also really helped the way we interact with one another when it comes to writing music now, yeah. you know, um, used to be all or nothing. Like everyone was like, no, we got to It's got to be amazing. <laughs> you know, like right. it's got, I've got this idea. It's gotta, <laughs> it's gotta be this way, you right, know? Right. And like now I think we've all just kind of learned to sit back and listen to what each other's saying, yeah. or what, what the other guy's saying. And right. like, um, learn from them right and you know and I, i've learned a lot from the guys in converge and you know the guys in in the other bands i play yeah. in and i think the same can be said for everybody else yeah. in converge and i mean you know you when you play with other people you get an idea of what their process is like and right. you're kind of like never thought of doing things that way yeah i'm taking that right, right. you know you, so yeah you guys never really release much unreleased stuff either from each record it seems it seems like once the record's out that's it there's no yeah you know, we're, we're not you, like if usually we're stuff. writing right up until the point when we start recording yeah, yeah. it's like do we have enough yet right. I don't think we have enough yet. okay we got enough <laughs> right right um, this particular time we did actually write some extra material yeah um, and that'll see the light of day at some point yeah but yeah. um yeah and that we while all that was going on as well we were sort of stockpiling ideas to hopefully one day do a blood moon album yeah so oh, nice you know we'll see yeah is that something i'm sure everyone in the world has asked you guys is are you guys plan on doing that uh, stateside at some point people have asked yeah. i i don't think as many people are aware of it yeah. as you know as say people in Europe are because right, we played right. shows in Europe yeah, yeah. Um, like if you don't follow 
road burn and all that yeah, you that whole know. world you you wouldn't really know yeah. and uh i mean even when we played road burn nobody knew what it was or what to expect right right um so uh i think in the states that's kind of double right right people are people are still like what what is it <laughs> yes and if people don't know what that is it's you guys did a a, a live sets with uh, it was chelsea yeah chelsea wolf uh ben chisholm who who uh plays with chelsea in yeah. a band uh steven brodsky on uh second guitar mm-hmm. and then at, at roadburn um uh steve until nice joined for joined us for for uh, cruel bloom nice um and so when we did those shows we primarily just kind of went through converge's catalog and picked out all of like the slower stuff yeah, and, yeah. and the songs that we've never been able to play right. because of you know instrumentation or whatever right. and uh worked out you know ways to play them live yeah and uh reworked some stuff and sort of let uh the steve and ben and chelsea sort of take it in in different directions yeah, and yeah. it was it was a lot of fun and I, yeah. as far as stuff we've done live yeah I, that's probably the thing i'm most proud of yeah um because it really went far far beyond all yeah. of our expectations yeah, it's, 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 it's an amazing there's some video footage of it on uh, youtube that i've watched a, a few times and cool it's pretty good thanks so, man yeah 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 so hopefully we can uh, capture that in the studio too yeah. so at some yeah, point awesome. but at, at this point all we've done is just older yeah. material that we've right. already written like we we want to write new stuff and yeah. maybe rework some stuff that uh that kind of takes on a new i don't know that just it has a new vibe with right. all these different people playing with it yeah. we'll, we'll see what happens yeah. i don't know you uh it seems like the set list you guys do are always uh thought out pretty well I, i've always enjoyed like how you guys put a set together oh thanks there's a period you were opening with jane doe that i thought was pretty awesome oh thanks i saw providence that's us cheating. That's us. Okay, like Jane Doe. That's we can stretch that out for like fourteen minutes. Yeah, that's yeah. like a third, a quarter of a set right, right there. Yeah. Done. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, yeah. Like a lot of thought goes into it. Maybe not necessarily about like building flow. Right. We, sometimes that gets worked out while we're on the road, right. but um, it's usually like everything. Kurt has like. 14,000 guitar tunings. Right, right. And so it's like everything has to be blocked together by tuning. Right. And, and so that's, it, 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 it's pretty funny. Like if, if you were sitting in the room with us while we're like rehearsing for a tour, yeah. oh, oh yeah, let's do this song into this. No, I can't do that. That's right. two different tunings. <laughs> I have to switch guitars. Right. Like fucking, what, what could you, could you, is there a way you could change it a little right. bit? Or, yeah. No. <laughs> Fuck. I was, I remember that band Arch is a Loaf? Yeah. Uh, one time I saw them, and the same thing, they used different tunings, and but they didn't have like a bunch of guitars with them, like I imagine like Sonic Youth would have. Yeah. So the set was like an hour long, but there's probably like 40 me- minutes of, of tuning music <laughs> in, in, in the set, you know? That's awesome. But, uh, dude, and I've noticed sometimes you guys will throw like a song you haven't done in years in a set, and is that just something you guys want to do or do you um, it's respond a little, to fans and that kind of thing we I mean we kind of respond to fans and yeah. that stuff I mean I, I think we go into it with the intention of yeah like people always talk about wanting to right, hear this right. and we're just like cool we'll relearn it and then like it's it's getting down to the wire and like we gotta leave for tour in right. three days and yeah, like yeah. We have all this other shit to do, and then we're like, yeah, fuck it. I'm not right, right. That fucking <laughs> song. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that song sucks anyways. Right, right. Um, but, uh, yeah, every now and then we'll throw in some stuff we haven't played in a while. Uh, just to kind of, you know, oh, that might be fun, and then right. we play it for, like, half a tour, and we're like, that song kind of sucks <laughs> live. Let's just yeah, cut yeah. that out. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then a few years ago, you worked with, uh, you recorded with uh, Max Cavalera, the 
Cavalera yes. conspiracy? Yeah. How did that come about? That's that's pretty. Good. That was one of the most random things that's ever happened in my life. Yeah. I was on tour with Doom Riders. Yeah. We had an. We were who were, we were on tour with uh, High on Fire. Okay. Yeah. And Queller Talk. Yeah. And um, we had an off night, so we went and played a show with Full of Hell mm-hmm. in Ohio somewhere. Yeah. You know, just like a, a tiny little like DIY show. Right. It was it was a rad show, but um, we loaded out and it was like two in the morning. Yeah. And we're getting in the van, literally getting ready to drive away. And my phone rings and it's some weird number I've never seen. I'm like, what's this? who the fuck is, what's this? It's yeah. two in the morning. Someone's calling me from Arizona. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Hey, is this Nate? Yeah, who's this? This is Gloria Cavalera. <laughs> what? <laughs> right, right, yeah. And I was like, fuck you, click. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. And, I, and she called me back and she was like, no, seriously, it's Gloria Cavalera. I'm like... Hey, what's up? And she's like, "Hey, I just wanted to know. I wanted to know if you wanted to play on the next Cavalera conspiracy record. Igor and Max are both like big fans of Converge, and they really like your your bass playing." Wow. And I was like, "No, for real. Who is this?" <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and uh, it it took like she really had to work to uh, right convince me that it wasn't a prank call. Right, right. And then. She was like, you want to do it? I was like, uh, yeah, fuck it. Cool. Yeah. And then they were like, all right, well, th- this is when we're recording. We're recording in Arizona. You can come out and stay for two weeks. I was like, hold, hold right. up. Yeah. I've got a kid. I can't yeah, yeah. do that. Right. You know, and th- honestly, they, they were super cool. They were just like, ah, we'll just send you the files. Do it uh-huh. there. And so uh, went into uh, Q Division mm-hmm. with uh, Chris Johnson. Yeah. who now plays bass in Doom Riders. Oh, yeah, yeah. And also in Deaf Heaven. Deaf Heaven, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and he, uh, we just literally, like, they would send us the tracks. Yeah. And then, uh, actually, they sent me the tracks. Yeah, okay, I forgot yeah. about this. Yeah. So they, they sent me the tracks the Friday. I was going in on a Monday. They sent, me, they sent them to me that Friday. Yeah. And I was like, all right, cool, I'm going to sit down and learn these. And then I got... I got sick as fuck. Yeah. Like puking, like sweat, right. you know, crazy fever. Yeah. Like didn't even listen to the songs. Right. At all. Yeah. The whole weekend, just sick as fuck. And then it was Monday. I like, all right, I got to go into the studio. Yeah. And record this album that I've never heard. <laughs> and uh, literally, God, I hope they don't listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like the first time I even heard any of the songs. Yeah. I was driving the Q division to really? record them. Yeah. Wow. And so we got in there and I was Chris is like, "All right, which one one you want to do first?" And I'm like, "Well, I haven't even heard all of them yet and I don't know how to play any of them. So let's start at the first one." Yeah, yeah. And uh we just but yeah, I mean, like they were pretty straightforward like thrashy metal oh, yeah, songs. Yeah. So so yeah. it was fairly easy to get I, through. I've listened to the record a few times. I, oh, wouldn't, thanks. I wouldn't be able to tell that to <laughs> Thanks. You just learned them on the way there. So. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and they're super fun to play. Yeah. Did you and do any live stuff with, with them? Or? No, I no. didn't. Yeah. Like, they they asked me to yeah. uh, uh, quite a few times, but every time it was like, man, I'm, a, I'm on tour with yeah. Converge, or like, you know, it was, hey, we're doing this seven-week tour. I'm like, right. I can't do that either. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm right. sorry. Right. I felt bad. I really wanted to do it yeah. because you know a they're super cool yeah b it would be really fun yeah and like i mean how often do you get opportunities like that it's yeah. just really cool but yeah. it just never worked out unfortunately yeah. that's cool though to get to work with simple work. It's it's awesome like, yeah awesome and like I, i've i feel lucky because i've become friends with igor right you know like he'll, i'll just get random text messages from him and like yeah you know it's it's pretty cool you know yeah that, that's one of the things i've talked about with some of the other uh, guests on here is like just being from the hardcore scene or you know underground heavy scene people are approachable there's no you know like matt pike to me is the same as robert plant yeah know, in the same world but i could probably go up to matt pike and yeah talk to him and, yeah he's know, like or, the or, most down-to-earth yeah chill dude and he's hilarious yeah yeah really hilarious yeah so it's that must be great to be able to yeah it's cool be surrounded with just good 
to people that are also creative yeah, yeah. giants and you know. going back to what I said earlier like I'm f- super lucky yeah, you know yeah. like um, Igor lives in London now yeah and so uh, Converge right like right after I had recorded the record Converge was on tour in the UK and you know he reached out and was like hey man and I'd never met him face to face yeah yeah he's like hey I want to come to the show you know uh, let's meet up let's get some food and I was yeah. just like okay <laughs> and I was like I don't know I re- like I don't know this dude yeah, I don't yeah. know anything about him other right. than I love these records yeah, but yeah. like I, I'm just like are we just gonna be like oil and water <laughs> like what's right, this gonna right. be like yeah, am yeah. I gonna be able to relate to this dude yeah and so I was like a little nervous about it and I'm yeah. waiting for him in this restaurant and I'm like okay this could be weird you yeah. know not like because he's like some kind of shitty dude or anything, right, but right. because like, you know, I'm a fan. Yeah, yeah. He's coming from this, you know, metal world that like I'm not really a part of. Yeah, and yeah. Like, I'm like, are we gonna? Yeah. Are we gonna get along? And so he walks in and he's wearing a blast shirt, and I'm yeah. like, we're good. <laughs> right, right. We're gonna hang. This is yeah, gonna yeah. be fine. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, and like we're totally tight now. He's a great dude. Nice. Total hardcore dude. Is he? Yeah. 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 Like really, really into hardcore. Yeah. You know, not like, you know how you meet the metal dudes? Like, yeah. Like right, hardcore. right. Yeah, like, no, yeah. he's legit, like, yeah. a real, yeah. real fan of hardcore and yeah. always has been. Yeah. You know, so. Nice. I, I think for uh, for guys like 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 Max and Igor yeah. um, coming up in Brazil, mm-hmm. I, I think there wasn't much difference between, like, that early kind of primal stage of death metal and like punk and yeah metal. yeah you yeah, know it was all yeah. sort of yep. mixed together i mean you listen to those early records and it's like you definitely hear discharge oh yeah you know yeah. so like, yeah beneath the remains and, and yeah um yeah so that's there cool. you go yeah so uh yeah so that was fun yeah, yeah. and we had veggie burgers nice nice yeah um and so i guess to close it too you you've been skating all your life and now there's yeah. a bunch of skate parks in massachusetts when i was a teenager that we didn't have yeah we had sidewalks and you know so, i mean but, same basically yeah uh, i was lucky in virginia beach because yeah. we had a few public parks with vert ramps like mount trashmore and uh bayville and stuff yeah but you know they, it was part of like the rec center yeah which is really cool mm-hmm and because of that, this big skate scene. And I mean, Virginia Beach is a big surf town. Yeah, yeah. And so those two things sort of go hand in hand. Yeah. So that was always around. But I mean, just like you said, like there weren't really like great skate parks. Right, right. For I mean, anywhere really at that yeah. point. Like the, the the age of the skate park was dead by that point. Yeah. Um, every, you know, I was, as I'm sure, everybody else was at the time. Like in the in the late eighties, early nineties, it was all about street skating because yeah, yeah. that's what was available yeah, to you yeah. you know yeah. it was either go ride that vert ramp right and because there's only so many vert ramps <laughs> left every time you go to a vert ramp it's like every pro that lives right. within fucking is 200 there. miles is there so yeah, it's yeah. like well I'm not you know. right <laughs> okay I'll just watch you yeah. know I'm gonna go street skate yeah um, so yeah kind of grew up with that same yeah uh lack of 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 skate parks yeah. and it's it's been pretty fucking cool in my adult life to yeah. watch like this total renaissance of of concrete skate park building and yeah. like, being able to actually go on and ride all this shit yeah. you know yeah. still still like having having it enough like I'm not good at skateboarding <laughs> but like being able to just I'm still able to ride it, so yeah, it's yeah. cool. And, yeah. and like, you know, it took forever for Boston to get a park. Yeah. Like, but now since that happened, it's just been kind of moving outward from there. Nashua just built a killer park, Framingham. Yeah. Stuff is happening everywhere, yeah. and then there's like really good DIY scene too. Yeah. Lots of backyard stuff and nice. like fun shit to ride. So, and, and those public ones are like well maintained. They're not all trashed and yeah, for the yeah. most part. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you know. You build a fucking giant skate park under a bridge in Boston, right? Like, there's gonna it, there, there's gonna be a certain level yeah, yeah, of yeah. anarchy under there. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, for the most part, yeah, yeah. they're they're pretty well maintained. Nice. And I mean, it's 
it's cool yeah. you know it's really cool like as someone who's been skating you know since i was five years old yeah it's really amazing to see the way that um modern skate park design has changed but even more interesting is it the way that skate park design has influenced actual skateboarding yeah and so like you know the level that younger kids are at now mm-hmm. like the ones that are really into it yeah it's just it's fucking crazy cool. it's yeah. crazy yeah. it's crazy yeah it's like you know you're watching it's, I'll, I, I'll try not to get too fucking skating or no no but, no that's but funny. like you know you're watching these little kids that are just doing like you know kick flip blunt fakies and st- like as setup tricks and i'm yeah, like yeah. that was like the trick that like if you could do that you <laughs> right. won the contest yeah, now yeah, it's yeah. like that's just a setup trick right right that's nothing yeah you know i'm like fuck yeah. it's, it's it's incredible yeah it's also like fuck you i hate right, you right. but at the same time i'm just like i just i'm i'm amazed i just yeah, want to yeah. watch and yeah. i get so stoked right you know and like i, I could talk all night yeah, yeah. Skate, no, no, it's, but like yeah like uh, overall the whole it's just changed a lot yeah you know the level that people are skating at the the quality of like the terrain yeah it's really gotten a lot less or a lot less um male dominated there's way more women skateboarding now mm-hmm. which i think is fucking awesome yeah, yeah. It gets me super stoked yeah you know i don't know yeah skateboarding yeah and that's cool that it's it's because i, I skated a little as a, a kid and a teenager yeah. but I, I never i don't think i ever went on a ramp or anything yeah it's just sort of like to get around town and yeah i mean if you and if you didn't have access to yeah that, then yeah yeah you know why would you yeah you know and it it's one of those things just like anything else like if you catch the bug yeah you just that's it that's yeah. what i'm doing yeah and i I've, i say it all the time but again you know i'm lucky like yeah skateboarding was just going back to the very first question you asked me like skateboarding was literally the door to everything else in my life like if if i had not been into skating with i would have never found this music yeah yeah. i would have never gone down the path i went down so yeah it's lucky yeah. You know, Thrasher magazine looking through the back like <laughs> I don't know what that band is but it's yeah. got a cool looking skull right right I'm into them yeah <laughs> yeah I th- I, when I first moved to uh, Swampscott I would skate down to the train station there's a Swampscott train station and I was probably 12 and I was 13 and when I, I started seeing kids with like Iron Maiden shirts I was like alright those are the kids that you know yeah and yeah same there's thing, my tribe skating yeah, so yeah. It's, it's definitely uh and I think they're very similar, like skating and, and punk rock. And yeah. People that get that bug, it stays with them forever. I yeah, totally, like so. man. Totally. It's, I mean, I'm a little different yeah. than I was when I was 14. Yeah. yeah. But I'm still all the same. I'm still like all the same shit that I liked when I was 14. Like, yeah. I've had that conversation with, with a friend of mine before where basically we concluded whatever you're into when you're 14 yeah. that's pretty much where you are for the rest yeah, of yeah. your life yeah yeah I've kinda, <laughs> yeah it's, i've, I've talked about that a lot with i kind of go back to the stuff i loved and that between like 13 and 15 yeah is like with me still constantly yeah and i mean i i don't know if it's that way for ev- everyone or for yeah. every generation yeah maybe we were really lucky at the time that that we were coming up because yeah. there was some really interesting new shit happening yeah yeah you know yeah and i was just lucky to right place right time yeah yeah. with pretty much everything in my life but like yeah skateboarding was the doorway for sure you know cool well uh thanks for doing this man dude thanks for having uh, me yeah it's fun awesome i'll talk your ear off all night if you let me (laughs) so you better stop me yeah yeah cool (laughs) awesome man right on cool